Let's welcome uh, Nina Davaluri. Hi, Nina. Hi, Amar. Thank you for having me. This has been such a wonderful um, time that I've been able to spend with, with seeing so many great faces. And uh, congrats to you on this production as well. Uh, it's been really lovely to, to see everyone. Great, uh, great. Uh, thank you for ha you know for you being here with us today. And I got to ask you. I know you were busy pre-COVID uh, with a project I think called Complexion, and you went to India and did things like that. And then suddenly COVID got in the way. Can you kind of tell us what you were up to? Yeah. Uh, so I have been working for I guess um, almost a year and a half now on a documentary, and it's called Complexion. And what started as, you know, something that I had experienced, especially growing up in a South Asian family and background, uh, is the lighter skin you are, the more beautiful you're considered. But that also translates to inequality uh, for women more so than men around education, careers, um, and just daily life uh, within India. So it's very much also a socioeconomic factor. Uh, so we were able to film in Italy, and then we were also uh, where we were at Venice Film Festival, which launched our project, which was really great. Uh, and then in January, we were in Bangladesh and India. Um, it was an interest, I think, for me going to India, uh, especially filming where we did. We worked with a lot of orphanages on the ground and groups that were uh, really helpful in, uh, in terms of filming and partnering with that were able to access the correct people that we could speak with um, and also have a broad range of people that we were interviewing from the wealthy to also uh, the poor and how, how the skin lightening industry affects uh, every class, I, I think, in India is what we found. Uh, so it's been uh, on hold for the time being for obvious reasons, uh, but we will be releasing our footage hopefully in the next week. Uh, we're going to be able to start releasing what we like to call our drops via social media and share some of those stories uh, that we were and and for you guys to meet some of the people that we worked with. Great. Uh, look forward to some of the Indian segments. I know, like you said, complexion and color impacts people with darker skin and they you know, uh, kind of a lot of them are also poor. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a double whammy of sorts. Uh, so please uh, do keep us posted on that. And now India has uh, got the COVID crisis too. Uh, yeah. Um, so unfortunately, my, my mom is actually still in India. She was there visiting her sister uh, there in Vijaywada. She was there and scheduled to come back in the first week of March. And given everything that happened, uh, you know, obviously the safest place for her was to stay at the time. So thankfully, fortunately, they are all doing well and stay and staying safe and inside. But, um, you know, I think this this was the other part of the conversation that so many people have talked about. And I think also in regards to with complexion is that what we're realizing even here um, and dealing with hunger in both countries and kind of being able to see both sides of it. Uh, is that women of color are affected here much more percent, especially women on the front lines that are, you know, our doctors and nurses that are also in the service industry that don't necessarily have the nest egg to rely on um, to, to plan for something like this. Uh, they're, they're being very seriously affected in our countries right now. And one of those aspects is, is also hunger. So one of the initiatives that our team is also taking on for complexion is how can we work with those organizations such as Indiaspora um, to really also spread that message out there that knowing that that's um, a whole conversation that's happening here. Great. Uh, good to hear that and keep us posted on that, I'm sure. Uh, also, let's turn to New York. You live in New York. Uh, how are you weathering the storm? Uh, I know your sister is a um, MD on the front lines. Mm -hmm. So what what what's going on in the epicenter of this crisis? Yeah, she uh, she has been on the front lines. Um, thankfully, there seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel. She's no longer um, actually on the COVID floor, seeing COVID patients uh, starting this week. So they had enough um, physicians and um, doctors, and she's a urologist, so she was able to go back to urology. Uh, but she's still, you know, working every day. Um, I'm actually in upstate New York. Uh, I was able to come to Syracuse, uh, which is where my mom's house is. So I've been quarantined up here. So it's kind of been hard. Mm. All of us are in separate areas during this time. Um, but thankfully for, you know, that just the fact that we've all been healthy. Uh, Mina, who's my sister, the physician, um, she has been positive throughout this process um, and has taken necessary precautions. And I think 
just even for her to face this, she's been keeping us a little sane. Um, so that's been really helpful. And, uh, you know, New York is a city I love to visit because of all the restaurants and everything is shuttered. And ironically, the, the restaurant workers uh, are the ones now unemployed and don't have food. So what, mm -hmm. what do you feel about all that situation there? So I've actually been partnering with some of my favorite um, restaurant chefs um, whom I adore and love. And this was a conversation we had. What can we do? Um, how can we use our platform to support um, your workers and everyone who's so important in our lives? Uh, and so we started doing um, Instagram live cooking shows with all the chefs. And for everyone who tunes in, they have the option to donate to their restaurant relief fund to help these workers and their families. Uh, so again, using being able to use our platforms virtually uh, has been something that's really, I think, been positive and uplifting. Everyone is cooking in the kitchen now. Uh, so if you're able to support any, you know, um, these workers, or if you see something like this via Instagram or Facebook Live, I would encourage you to tune in and also share and donate. Great. So once again, Nina, thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you doing the video for us. And uh, that's been played thousands of times uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And we really thank you for all the support you've given us. Uh, so thank you, guys. Thank you.